वेलकम बैक टू डेवलपर्स होम एंड टुडे वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट स्पार्क ईटीएल विथ लेक हाउस एंड इन दैट वी आर डिस्कसिंग विथ अपाची आइसबर्ग इन अर्लियर ब्लॉग एंड वीडियो वी हैव डिस्कस स्पार्क ईटीएल विथ अपाची हुडी एंड वी अंडरस्टूड व्हाट इज अपाची हुडी एंड व्हाई वी नीड टू यूज अपाची हुडी इफ इन केस यू वांट टू क्रिएट लेक हाउस स्ट्रक्चर एंड वी आल्सो डिड ईटीएल विथ अपाची हुडी and same way today we'll gonna do with apache iceberg first we'll understand what is apache iceberg what all kind of different features and capabilities apache iceberg provides and then we'll do etl with apache iceberg so if you wanna follow same spark etl concepts or if you wanna learn about data engineering you can follow me on this uh, medium blog you can also follow me on this website you can watch this youtube videos and you can also clone this github repo where i am posting all the codes all the data files all the solution so that you can also practice with me if in case if you have any doubts we can also discuss on youtube videos you can also comment here so today if you go to chapter 9 and if you clone this github repo i have you know that uh, clone this into my jupiter lab so i have this all the chapters also available here and today we are doing chapter 9 which is spark etl with apache iceberg so before starting that what we will do is we'll uh, first understand what is apache iceberg so you know that earlier we have discussed about delta lake and we discussed about apache hoodie and now we discussing about apache iceberg so this all are lake house formats and nowadays these are the very well known formats if anyone wants to create lake house they first discuss that what should be our file format and mostly everyone prefers delta lake apache iceberg or apache hoodie so there is you know that big talk going on which format should we use it's up to you use based on your use case but here i am discussing you know that what are the advantages if in case you want to create your lake house with apache iceberg so if we start with the apache iceberg story it was developed by netflix they were earlier using parquet and apache orc file formats and they found some limitations and that's why they developed this new file format which is apache iceberg so basically you know that when they were moving this all the data they have like millions and billions of rows of data and they found that if in case if there is a delete require or if there is update require they have to you know that read everything do filter and rewrite everything again and there was you know that uh, always need to rewrite require and that's why you know that they have developed this apache iceberg where it provides schema evolution it provides asset transactions you can also do time travel and for performance improvement they have also designed few concepts like bloom filters and column level statics which also provides this very high performance uh, improvements on query and how they did this they did this by dividing this into two parts one is the data and one is metadata so they are storing a uh, metadata separately and they are storing data separately so you know that earlier we have like learn that in apache hoodie and uh, delta lake they are also doing same thing they have meta metadata and they have data and everyone like also storing data into parquet format same way apache iceberg is also storing data into parquet format and storing metadata into different formats json and then they are also storing some metadata into avro format so yeah this is all about apache iceberg and apache iceberg which can be you know that uh, work with variety of big data processing engines like apache spark apache hive and pastro today we'll gonna do with uh, apache spark but in a future we'll also learn about how to do with pastro and uh, overall you know that it's very flexible very powerful if in case you want to design very big data warehouse or very big lake house so this is the option to go and uh, these are the capabilities it provides scalability flexibility performance and again it's open source so you can make your own changes you can customize as per your need so this is all about apache iceberg and now we'll do etl you know that uh, we have done etl till now with different data sources and we have almost completed these are the all data sources and today we are doing with apache iceberg 
so what we will do is we'll take one of the source system we source data from there we'll do some transformation and then we we'll load data into apache iceberg format okay so i am taking simple and exactly same example which we have taken in our last video and last to last video i am gonna source data from mysql and i'm using same data set once data is loaded we'll do some transformation and then we'll load data into apache iceberg format and once that is done what we will do is we'll also read data which is stored in apache iceberg format we write different spark sql queries so that we understand how to deal with apache iceberg we understand how this data is stored at folder level so we'll be having understanding on metadata and data part so let's start and uh, if you have followed earlier video and blog you can directly skip this uh, first three part which is you know that loading data and then doing transformation you can directly go to this part where we are creating iceberg table and then doing all of the operations with iceberg so now i am going to this jupyter lab and uh, first thing is we're gonna start spark session and here we need to start spark session with all the required apache iceberg packages and we'll also need to specify configurations for apache iceberg so you know that we are sourcing data from mysql so here we need two packages apache iceberg and mysql and uh, you know that uh, we also need to pass this all the apache iceberg configurations so let me just start this spark session and if you go here you will get to know that we are passing these are the all require apache iceberg configurations so now what i will do is i will just uh, execute this one which will load all the packages for iceberg and mysql and also configurations for apache iceberg and then we'll discuss about configurations so let's execute this one so it will load all the packages and start spark session for us so now here you see that we are passing this sql extensions spark catalog spark catalog type and then catalog local catalog local type in catalog dot local dot warehouse we are saying that warehouse it means we say that create one folder with name warehouse and store all the data into that folder so now here we see that we have this all the packages are downloaded and installed for apache iceberg and also same for mysql so now we have session ready and that session is having all the required packages so first thing is load data from mysql we have done this in our last videos i am just executing this we'll load all data into this data frame we'll check uh, schema and then we'll also check sample data so we'll be sure that we have this all data available into our data frame and here we see that we have four columns food scientific name group and subgroup which is also available so we have this data frame ready second thing is we'll gonna create hive table so that we can write spark sql queries i'm executing this and now we have temp food as a table available in that we have this all data available and now here we do uh, like just analysis that okay which group is having how many rows so i am just executing this and in a next step i am just selecting food as a uh, herbs and spice i am only interested in a herbs and spice group we'll create one more data frame and then we'll load that data frame into apache iceberg format so now i will execute this which will filter it out this data we'll just checking number of rows in that data frame and now here we are creating our first iceberg table so you know that till now we have created this all different data formats where we are saying that we we want data into parquet format avro format orc apache hoodie and then delta format and always we are passing that format same way here we are also passing format and for apache iceberg format name is iceberg and now i am saying that uh, use this data frame and write it to iceberg food so i want to create that folder which will have name as a iceberg food and use format as a iceberg and then create so i'm executing this so this will uh, create one folder here with name warehouse and in that folder we are saying that i want to name this folder as a iceberg food so now if i go inside 
it created iceberg food and inside that we'll have two things one is data and one is metadata so now if i go inside i have data folder i have metadata folder data folder which is having actual data we have 52 rows so those 52 rows are stored in this parquet files which is like data files and now we have one more folder which is having metadata and here we have this metadata which stored in json format some of the properties are stored in avro format also and we have version hint which will say that okay what is the latest version so now first we go to this metadata we see that they are saying that format version and then table uh, uuid location and then schema in schema it stores that what all different fields we have and then what is the field type is it required or not so these are the all details available here it stores schema same way in schema it will store that what kind of fields we have if in case we have partition it will store partition if we have sort it will store sort if we have like any other properties and then snaps not snaps not lock so these are the all properties are stored into metadata file and as we discussed there is a one more file which will just give hint of latest version and file name is itself version hint so currently it says that this is version number one so that is correct so this is how you know that we have created our first apache iceberg table you can also do this just clone this repo you have this all the sample data and everything available so you can use this generic food.csv file you can upload this data into mysql and then connect mysql from spark load data from that to here and you can also do same operations you can also do etl same way i am doing now okay so we have table created so now what we will do is we'll append few more rows and then we'll see how it is creating one more version and how it's storing this data into same table so now what we will do is uh, we will filter with one of the uh, more group type and now this time we are selecting fruits so we have seen that with uh, herbs and spices 52 rows with fruits we have 43 rows so now this new data frame which is having 43 rows and now we are saying that data frame dot write dot format and we want to store that as a iceberg format mode is append so now we are executing this and this will append this data into same folder so now if you go inside we see here now we have two parquet file first one which is having like 52 rows second one which is having 43 rows same we will have more metadata files so earlier we had this fi one file this one file and we had only one metadata file but now we have few more metadata file and in that it's storing version 2 and you know that they are also creating this file as a v1 dot metadata v2 dot metadata so from there directly we understand that these are the metadata for version 2 if we go to version hint it will say that okay we have latest version as a version 2 so yeah that is correct so now we have also understood how to insert or append data into our table so yeah so this is what we also understood so this is how you know that we have completed etl but now we are dealing with apache iceberg table so we'll also understand how we read data from apache iceberg so it's a simple normally what we do is spark dot read dot format and then load so in format we give that format that this data is in a hoodie format delta format parquet orc csv json and here it's iceberg so we are passing iceberg here and now if i execute this one i have now all the data and metadata stored in iceberg dapp data frame and now if i print that so yeah that is correct we have this all four columns stored into there and next step is i am just showing this data and it should go and read data from this apache iceberg table which is showing correctly so we have this all data coming correctly and we'll create spark sql uh, like uh, we'll create hive table so that we can write spark sql queries and then we'll just do some kind of analysis and we'll understand that how can we write this queries with spark sql also 
so it's always same once that uh, hive table is created and now i'm just executing query which is just printing data just getting count so we have 52 rows earlier created and then we added 43 rows so now we have 95 rows and then just getting what are the distinct subgroups and then we are getting sub subgroup wise row count so yeah this is all going correct so this is how you know that we have dealt with apache iceberg tables and uh, today we have learned you know that uh, these are the concepts which is like how to create apache iceberg table and we also have understanding of apache iceberg what are the features we get with apache iceberg how to install package and how to configure for spark if in case you want to use apache iceberg file format and then create table load data how it is creating data file and metadata file and then how to read data from iceberg format and how to write spark sql queries and do analysis on top of iceberg format so yeah i think this is all for today and uh, you know that will be going into much more detail with all these lake house formats like delta file and then hoodie and apache iceberg like how can we do optimization or you know that uh, from the scratch if in case you want to create this uh, lake house so what are the things you need to con consider those all things we're gonna discuss in much detail so we'll be starting one more series with name lake house and in that we'll be discussing that but in a next video we'll be comparing this iceberg hoodie and delta so we'll be having more understanding that which lake house format should be used yeah i think that's all for now we'll see you in next video and thanks for watching